We are upgrading your equipment and technology to enhance operational effectiveness and efficiency. This includes acquiring fit for purpose equipment, weapons, ammunition, and armored carriers to provide cover and protection for officers in combat situations. The 7th of April is hereby declared National Police Day in Nigeria. Ten days ago was the National Police Day, but of course, the pronouncement wasn't made up until two days ago. So from April the 7th next year, uh, Nigerians will be celebrating or commemorating National Police Day. That statement was made at the uh, Police Awards, and the Vice President, the Representative the President, uh, made that particular statement as you saw there. But what does this mean really, particularly for our security? And I think it provides us yet another opportunity uh, to talk about that all important conversation of security, particularly policing in Nigeria, which has been quite a thorny issue over the past uh, few decades. We have joining us on the program to walk through uh, that conversation, Mr. Alfred Anonubo, Forensic and Criminal Intelligence Specialist, MD Bell Protocol and Security Support Services Limited, uh, wears a number of hats. A fellow Chartered Institute of Forensic Investigation Professionals and fellow Chartered Forensic Fraud Investigators of Nigeria joins us virtually on the program. Good morning, uh, Mr. Anonubo. Good morning, and uh, it's always my pleasure to be with you. Absolutely. I know you are forensically looking at that uh, pronouncements. April 7th uh, is our National Police Day. So uh, speak to us. Uh, how does this change maybe the optics? How does it change things in any way? Having a National Police Day, a day set aside to celebrate our police and you know talk about the issues that affect them, which by the way is a lot. So for you, what do you see? Yeah, um, let me first of all appreciate the men of the Nigerian Police Services. Um, you know, often um, the police are often viewed from not too encouraging perspective by most Nigerians because they do not know the situations and circumstances under which they seek to deliver their services. So let's um, appreciate them, and I, I, I really do. And I want to thank the IG for hyping and bringing up this initiative at this time. Um, preceding the, the National Police Day was the Police Week, which usually is from the 1st of April to the 7th. So every first week of the year is uh, they commemorate and you know mark the Police Week. And I would also want to appreciate from the depth of my being, Mr. President, for the pronouncement they made about the National Police Day, the 7th of every April. Um, this is commendable. There is this saying that when you appreciate the little people do, you motivate them to seek to do more. And I think this must be accepted and recognized to be the right steps in the right direction. This is commendable. This is worth celebrating. It will give the Nigerian policemen and women a sense of a sense of importance that the entire nation have set aside a day to remember, recognize, and appreciate their contribution um, their contributions to our national safety. Um, this is awesome, and uh, it's commendable. You know, Mr. Ananubo, uh, it, it is indeed, you know, it's difficult to argue with you on that one, particularly with the police awards that were, was held recently, you know, and perhaps that will go a long way to um, increase the morale within the force. But some would say that really this is majoring in the minor where we have a police force that is lagging behind in the area of... Um, intelligence in the area of deterrence of crime and criminality, particularly, you know, insurgency, tackling insurgency and banditry in Nigeria's northeast and northwest. Uh, shouldn't uh, the energies of the government be channeled in that area such that 
you know, there'll be a great reduction of our dependence on the armed forces, uh, you know, which as we continue to say is overwhelmed, you know, with the intervention in that area. And we see, you know, a force that is more competent with tackling these um, uh, security concerns. Well, I, I think we must recognize that the Nigerian police service as presently constituted are extremely overwhelmed. And the reason being that there's so much poverty and poverty is like a fertilizer that breeds crime. So when the entire society are plagued by this debt of uh, uncertainty in basic sustenance, you expect people to explore opportunities, take advantages, and breach basic rules, which translates to crime in any society. So we are also overassessing our police capacity. We are drawing these men and women from our society. Some didn't join the police because they saw a career in the police service. Some, most people probably joined the police because um, they wish to find a job. They want to find something they could use to sustain and keep themselves going. So I don't want us to take our eyes away from those facts. When we are looking at the challenge or challenges being faced by the Nigerian police service in delivering their duties or protections of life and pro properties. Uh, having said that, we also must take into account that we have politicians whose span of involvement ranges between four to eight years. And for a, for a nation in a peculiar kind of situation, that is a very dangerous platform because while they are coming in, they are thinking of recovering from their elections. They are now looking at you know the next election within four years, and then possibly they get second term and they're on their way out. So you find that we have not been able to nurture, cultivate the political will consistent with patriotic aspirations as a people. So the, 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 the system does not give us room to have or harvest quality people that can handle the challenges of building a, a, a sustainable police system. So that is very critical in our consideration. But that is not to make excuse that the police have not been able to, you know, benchmark their, 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 their duties and their obligations to the nation in terms of dealing with uh, the issues of intelligence, issues of uh, manpower development, issues of engagement and all that. So we have this complex mix that's confronting the, the performance and the activities of the Nigerian police and also the, the difficulty they have in dealing with the quality of men we have in our political class. Now, you can't get clean water, like I always say, from a poison pool. Our politicians come from our society. Our policemen come from our society. So you can understand that we are coming from a shared value, shared you know, challenges. And um, it takes sincerely um, professionalism and exposure for people to cultivate that sense of okay let me go give it do it for the land do it for the nation it's not about me so there, there are challenges but i think we start somewhere we we've started the president has started by recognizing that this institution has so much to give and have given a lot they've lost men they have a lot of challenges they go through, they have challenges with equipment, training opportunities, internal issues, and the quality of people they also have in their rank and file in leadership. Because it's not just about the, 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 the institution of the police service, but also the people running the system. Some of them come with baggages. Some are coming from ethnic or political or religious, you know, privileges. And they bring these things to the service. So they, they become challenges, they become, you know, issues they deal with internally. And these things affect their output. It affects the quality, it affects their, their commitment to run investigations without bias, without pressure. You know, there are situations they arrest people, somebody makes it just a phone call, and they have to begin to think of the safety of their jobs. 
So these are elements we might probably deal with over time, depending on the type of leadership we have in our nation. But um, we must appreciate that we've come to accept that there is a 7th April, which is marked as the police day. And um, we hope that it will not just be another talk show we do with these days, but we'll be able to review the two sides, what the government is doing to ensure that they are, the country is policed, the content we are building into these men to ensure that we have capable and well-qualified professionals that will enforce our laws. And also even the lawmakers should be able to provide incentives that can motivate people who love this country to want to serve this country in the police service. All right. I know that in America, I think in May, they've been celebrating this since the 60s. I think National Police Memorial Day also, that's what it's called there, to highlight the concerns of the police force, as well as, you know, remember the men who have laid their lives down in, in the line of duty. And so I want you to speak further to the police force in this particular context, because this is like um, their own Armed Forces Remembrance Day, which is quite popular on January 15th every year right here in Nigeria. So for them... How can they make the most of this particular um, day to, to call attention of government and everybody in authority to ensure that their needs and their welfare is sorted? Because that's a big issue, which is why Bukola was saying it appears like majoring on the minor because their welfare is critical uh, at the end of the day to be able to provide the kind of service we expect from our police force. Because at some point, you know, they drop the ball. And that's why we have a lot of the army intervening in civilian issues. Well, we, you know, this is Nigeria, and uh, we are special in the way we do things. Most times, we don't want to build up to, you know, a, a, a goal. We like to respond to crises. We, we make statements when things are bad and down. But I would want to think that um, we, we, we need to trust God for a generation of men and women who can join the service. Um, purely for patriotic motives, uh, not because they are ethnically inclined or privileged or religiously advantaged. You see, the America we often mention, uh, uh, quote most times, is a society where patriotism ranks first. America comes first. And the same way you can use this patriotism to mislead the people, it's also the way you can use the patriotism to direct the people right. Um, we must not forget that policemen are Nigerians. So whatever affects most Nigerians impacts on the police service because they live with us, they go to the same markets. They, so if we are going to do anything, we must think beyond police as an establishment. We must look at the general society. We must, you know, the office of the citizens of Nigeria must become paramount. And that office accommodates everybody. That office has been missing in the polity of this nation. Of course, when events and ceremonies come, we mention it. But we have not been able to create and sustain the office of the citizens of Nigeria. We have Nigerians who don't have an office. But when you talk of the office of the president, you can see the glory, the candor, the pomp, the pageantry. You talk of the senior president. People die to get into this because these are few spots where people are given statesmanship, not the nationhood. So we are not building often the nation as a people. And that is what is affecting the quality and content of men we deploy to different services. So we need to rethink and our, our system needs to review this. When we promote citizenship, people will die for the country. They want to protect the country, whether as a policeman in the UK or other countries, it's not only police that serves the people. Elderly people will tell you the color of a car they saw at a particular time in a location. And that will give police the clue that the crime that was committed must have been committed by a car carrying this number. They profile the, the information and arrive at an intelligence that helps them to, to succeed. But where we create offices and not people, that is dangerous. It is very, um, it, it is not profitable for the entire country. So few people benefit because they are able to access those platforms. So I'm looking at, 
using this to make it a situation where Nigerians are built. Infrastructures will come with the, the specified content, not papers. You know, so when we have this and we are drawing men who are benefiting from the quality, from the system, to join any services, including the police, the attitude to duty will be you cannot undermine the laws of the land. You cannot compromise, irrespective of your position. We don't celebrate individuals. We celebrate people. That orientation is what we are going to trust could help us. But if it's about talking about training, buying equipment, and you are handing it to disgruntled people, to insecure people, people who are not even sure that they will be in the same place tomorrow you can because you didn't do what somebody like they will transfer you as punishment to somewhere no law protects you you can be dismissed from service you can be sick nobody comes to look for you some are wounded uh, in the line of duty there are no benefits and even if they come sometimes they are tampered with no system fights and protects these people right. so we need to look at these systemic things right so when we have them working now, if we make any promises to the police, I can assure you it will stand. But when the system, the delivery system is sick, is not functional, is not effective, can be tinkered by anybody, you come right. and change it, um, those are issues. So the policies must be supported by realities on ground. Mr. Donabu, absolutely. We need to really empower our police. And that's quite ironic because they should also have those powers responsibly that is and it's a very tricky balance again and this conversation can go on for a long time but quickly i want you to speak to uh, what is usually uh well i say the look and feel of the police which also contributes to how they are perceived uh in the public we can we've spoken about uh, welfare and the rest how can you arm someone with ak-47 and you're not paying the person good enough salary and the rest. But on the flip side is, a lot of people see the police in Nigeria carrying AK-47s, for example, and you know, there's already that fear, that barrier. It feels like this is a war situation. You have a lot of people coming to the country and they see our police with AK-47s and they're asking you, what is going on? I've never seen police in my own country. They tell you that they don't see police in their country even bearing arms or they are concealed. So they are shocked when they see our police with AK-47 or, or, you know, basically those kinds of weapons. So is that something we should also look into? Is there a thinking behind that? Um, maybe that can also help to improve things. Well, just in line with what I'm saying, we need to, we need to have a national reorientation on our perception about the police. Even the police themselves should be able to help themselves. Uh, the reason being that we've held very strongly negative notions about the police service probably because of their conduct because of their you know some unprofessional behaviors and all that and um there's a deep distrust between an average nigerian in my job i've encountered people who just to come to police when there are crimes or situations that requires coming to the police to make mere statements to collaborate that a, a, a crime was committed in their neighborhood and they'll say to you, no, I don't want to have anything to do with the police. Nigerians must change that orientation. We must own our police. The police must belong to us. And I think the police must build that bridge. Nigerians also must be able to build a bridge to cross over to the police. Right now, there's no trust. Nigerians don't trust the police. And unfortunately, the policemen are Nigerians. There's a very deep distrust even among themselves partly because of the way people are being treated, partly because of things being managed wrongly, but we need that. Um, the AK-47 is an assault-graded weapon. It's not meant to be carried around, except we have extreme threats that requires deployment of such weapons. Unfortunately, it has become a regular, normal part of the kit of an average policeman. You can see most policemen, in fact, you can hardly say policemen with light weapons. They move around freely with AK-47. The question is, are we at war? Yes, we are. We have moral wars. We have distrust. There is deep sense of enmity, not spoken, but in, in conduct between Nigerians and those that are meant to protect them. 
and sometimes the way some Nigerians are treated. And then finally, the media. The media must help build a good reputation for both Nigerians and the police. You see, people take to what they hear. Many times, these things are unsubstantiated, but it's easy. I watched a clip this morning, a young man playing prank on people, and he will approach them and say, they are shooting there, they are shooting there. Even people with arms, we start running because we have gotten used to rumors, hearsays, and that has molded the way we perceive these services. So Nigerians, it's serious reorientation, and that it must be driven by the police in their character at the station, the way they receive and treat Nigerians. We take people, we take, there are police stations across the country where you walk in, you get properly received by the DPO, but you will be wrongly treated by the people at the counter. And it is taken out on the police. You get treated wrongly by you know, a, a man that has chosen to exhibit indiscipline, but because he's wearing police uniform, people will conclude that that's the way police are. So these orientations must be aggressively driven. The change must come from also within the police. Mm. There must be punitive measures for anybody that violates the rights of Nigerians. But there must be severe penalties for any Nigerian that, you know, that you know, uh, disrespects or breaches the privileges and rights of a Nigerian police policeman. There should be no room for sacred cows. Mm. If you, if you, if you insult or disrespect a police the officer, important points that you that you make there, and it's they're, they're quite difficult to contest, uh, Mr. Honourable. But earlier on, you also made some critical points that I'd like to follow up. You talked about the importance of offices and the need for policies to be in line with what's on ground in terms of realities. Speaking of which, how import, how strong is the Office of the Police Service Commission and uh, the Ministry of Police Affairs to demand better funding for the welfare needs of the Nigeria Police Force? But certainly, if they are doing excellently well, we'll be feeling their impact. And it has to do with who they put in those offices. I don't want to mention names, but I know that we've had uh, chairman of police service commissions who we are up and doing. We've also had those that gave ceremonial patronage for either supporting politicians or whatever. Um, some of these establishments must be carefully um, assessed. And then people being given responsibilities must be by merit. It shouldn't be by any other consideration because police is the life of our society. It's police that keeps Nigeria moving. I know the army is there, the immigration, they have other services, which I highly respect and commend their roles. But the police takes the bullets every day. So we need to look at putting men based on merits to some of these offices, based on antecedents, based on track records, so that we don't have people ceremonially, ceremonially occupying offices, but they are incap incompetent, they are incapable of even interpreting basic security. I, I, I did something funny recently, and I asked somebody, I said, by the way, what is the meaning of police? You are a police officer. And he said, oh, police, uh, we are for protection of life. I said, no, I mean the definition. The police is an acronym for public officers, for legal investigations and criminal emergencies. And if you take that home, people know that I'm a legal officer, a public officer. My duties are for legal investigations and criminal emergencies so they can define their existence. Now, when we don't have content, you just do the usual window dressing. Well, Mr. Mr. And Lonnie, I think it's time the, the entire country you know, we take this as a project. So we don't lose Let's sight of some of the important move. points you have made. I mean, it's really instructive. You've given Nigerians uh, the full form of the word, well, now acronym, police. So it's not just police, police, police. It actually means something. Public officer for legal investigations and criminal emergencies. So if our viewer does not remember any other thing about this conversation, at least you remember <laughs> what police means. But, you know, we'd like to thank you so much, Mr. Alfred and Nongo. Quite an interesting conversation around you know that critical part of our security architecture and our society
the police. Mr. Alfred Anonimbo, forensic and criminal intelligence specialist, thank you so much for forensically dealing with this conversation. It's always my pleasure to be with you. Absolutely. We'll take a moment now, and when we return, uh, we'll talk art. You might see Bukola get to do some painting, or even Jeffrey. Maybe me, but we're talking art uh, this morning. The kind that gets you inspired, just takes you to a different world. That's in a few seconds. Stay with us on the morning.